Welcome to the last part of chapter six. This time we are going to discuss uh, the last little bit of homeostasis when it comes to our bones, um, and that is how we repair our bones as well as how we kind of categorize the various fractures um, that occur. Um, so a fracture is a break in the bone. Um, usually in childhood, adulthood, uh, those fractures are the result of some sort of trauma. Uh, so for instance, uh, I got run over by a zero turn lawnmower by my mother um, and broke my ankle in three places. Uh, that was certainly traumatic. Um, However, in old age, uh, fractures will typically take place um, from kind of the weakening and overall thinning of our bones. Um, women who have osteoporosis, for instance, can fracture a hip, um, sometimes just stepping off a curb the wrong way because um, overall their bones um, are just so porous. Um, but typically, if you break a bone uh, as a kid or as an adult, um, it's because something happened to you. We classify um, fractures in three ways. There are three things that we look at. Well, four really, because we look at kind of how the break occurs. Um, but there are three ways that we, that we kind of classify bones and three things that we look at. And they're kind of either or propositions. You can have kind of one uh, and the other, right? So we look at the ends of the bones. Are they still in alignment or not? Um, we look at the completeness of the break. Did it break all the way through or not? And we look at whether the skin is penetrated or not. So you can never have like a displaced, non-displaced fracture. It's either one of those or the other. Can't be both. Um, if the ends are still in their normal alignment, that is a non-displaced fracture. If the ends are out of normal alignment, if they no longer kind of meet, then that is a displaced fracture. If the bone is broken all the way through, you have a complete fracture. If the bone, the bone is not broken all the way through, you have an incomplete fracture. If the skin is penetrated, you have an open or compound fracture. If the skin has not been penetrated, then you have a closed or simple fracture. The kind of fourth way that we classify bones is kind of how they occurred, um, kind of the, the type of fracture that has occurred. Um, so con Humidity fractures um, are very common in the elderly. Um, usually is, this occurs when the bone breaks into kind of several pieces um, because elderly bones are more brittle. They do tend to kind of break this way, um, almost like um, if you've ever taken um, a really, really old, old kind of dry stick, it kind of just collapses under itself. That's a kind of conumitted fracture. Compression fractures occur when the bone is crushed. Um, very common in osteoporotic bones. Um, think about uh, like a crushed vertebra. If you've ever seen like a car compactor, when it smooshes down and flattens the car, that's kind of a compression type fracture. Spiral fractures, uh, very common sports injury, um, usually some kind of twisting or torsion forces that are applied to the fracture. Uh, epiphyseal plate fractures occur when the epiphysis separates from the diaphysis along that epiphyseal plate. Um, so this is, this is something that can occur um, in, in children really because um, the, the, we're separating at that, that plate. Um, the other type of uh, fracture that's common in children is what we call a green stick fracture. Um, these are incomplete fractures. Um, if you've ever had like a really young, instead of the really old stick, if you've ever had like a really new stick or a new branch that you just pulled off a tree and you try to bend it, uh, it tends to just kind of bend and not break completely. You might break like a portion of it, like a side of it, but you're not going to snap it all the way in two. Children's bones are much more flexible than adult bones. Uh, they have uh, a whole lot more organic matter, so they're just much more resilient. Um, and so they, these kind of incomplete green stick fractures tend to occur in kids. Um, depression fractures occur um, when part of the bone is kind of pressed inward, as you see here. Um, so kind of think of somebody taking a hammer and kind of knocking somebody on the head with it. Skull fractures are often uh, depression fractures. Um, so let's take a look at my crazy ankle, shall we? Um, you can see I had a spiral fracture 
in my fibula, which is this non-weight bearing bone right here, and then my tibia, which is my shin bone, I broke in two places. I broke it here in the back, called what we call the posterior malleolus, and then this portion right here, you can see I have um, a non-displaced incomplete fracture of, well actually it was a complete fracture, it's hard to tell though, um, of what we call the menial malleolus. So I had a non-displaced complete fracture here, a, a non-displaced complete fracture here, and then this kind of incomplete kind of spiral fracture wrapping up and around the fibula. Um, in order to repair that, I now have betel inside my ankle. So I have this about five, six, seven inch plate all along my fibula um, and two screws to screw back in that medial malleolus that had snapped off. Um, so that's what the inside of my ankle now looks like. Great fun, right? Um, so once we break a bone, uh, luckily for me, that bone repairs itself um, and repairs itself uh, quite well. Um, so typically the first step in repairing a bone fracture, so you can see here we've got a non-displaced complete fracture, is a hematoma. Essentially a blood clot forms. Um, the bone has broken, the blood vessels have broken, so the blood kind of spills into the surrounding tissue. Um, and we get the hematoma forming. The blood vessels will start to knit together through their repair and mitosis processes. What will occur first in terms of repairing the bony tissue is what we call a fibrocartilaginous callus. Um, so it's more kind of soft, kind of almost fibrocartilage in that broken area that starts to kind of knit the ends of the bones back together. Once the blood vessels have fully healed and are complete, then we get oxygen and nutrients and immune cells and osteoblasts and we'll start to lay down um, our kind of spongy bone again and we get the formation of a bony callus. Um, the bone will completely heal. Uh, you cannot, it um, takes, takes a long time, um, but it, it will eventually completely heal and, and generally regain uh, its full strength. And then what will typically occur uh, kind of after the bone has fully healed is there will be a little bit of remodeling, um, just to kind of try to get it back to its proportions that it was beforehand. Now, because I actually have uh, metal inside mine, um, my right ankle that I broke is still now larger than my left ankle, which was unbroken. Uh, but it's not so much due to the repair of my bone as it is to the presence of the metal plate and the metal screws.